let's start with a roll call. Director Muller. Here. Director Coverdale. Here. Director Michelson. Here. Vice President Feldman. Here. President Reynolds. Here. All right, do we have any public comment? Yeah, how come the public comment is, where's the, uh, we'll do the flag. All right, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. I gotta stand up with my cords. <laughs> I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance, allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States of America, of America and, and to the republic for which it, for which stands, it stands, one nation, one nation under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. For all. Amen. <laughs> all right. Do we have any public comments? Do we have any members of the public? All right, um, the first, Mary, do you want to start the first item? Uh, are we going to keep a consent calendar first? Yep, does anybody wish to take anything off the consent calendar? Or any comments on the consent calendar? Um, I have a comment. Okay. I don't, I don't remember which line item it was. But there was a line item where it represents us as being elected to our offices. And it's not a big deal, but we were appointed in lieu of election. Now, I think our lawyer uh, could speak to that, but it, it, I think it's important that we're accurate there. You know, people didn't vote for us. That's the reason we saved $30,000 in election expenses. And it's kind of a, you know, whiny little point, but I think we want to be accurate in our uh, communication. I can't remember, I think I saw it in the, uh, the accounting, the audit, and I think I saw it in one of the items on the consent calendar. So I just think it's really important that we're careful there. Yeah, Patrick, so- What's uh, the right terms? Th thank you for waiting till we had a, uh, a regular board meeting, it is. That is reflected in the minutes of the regular meeting. Um, it says newly elected directors. And I believe Director Coverdale's right. I don't think that the new directors were elected. I think that they were appointed. And I can't remember the exact wording, but we got something from the county's office that uh, might've said something that was in last month's board meeting. I don't know if Mary or Denise, you remember the exact wording of the, what we got. I think it's, it says appointed in lieu of election. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's what they told me when, when they gave me the notice that it was elected in lieu of an election or because we ran for election, but we were unopposed. So Rod didn't have the whole election, but we made ourselves available to be elected and the county spoke by not speaking. So for purposes of the minutes um, that are on the consent calendar, I think that we can make that revision on these minutes and then you would approve the consent calendar with the amended minutes. I don't know where else it's referenced. If it's referenced somewhere else, we should try to figure that out as we get to that item, if it's in the audited statements as well. Okay, I'll look for it. Yeah, it's, if okay. I may say. Are there, any, are there any other comments on the uh, consent calendar? All right, do we have a motion? Oh, I should note that, um, I actually reviewed and approved the uh, claims this month. I found everything in order. There is a typo in our minutes that states that uh, Vice President Feldman reviewed them. He may or may not have, but I, I did actually review them as well. Or yeah, that was a typo. So, yeah, so we probably want to make a note for, when, for next month when we put those notes, we yeah. uh, duly record those notes. Any other, uh, uh, we need a motion to approve the consent calendar. As we've just amended, we amended item A to reflect President Reynolds and we've amended the item C, the minutes to change the word reelected to appointed in lieu of election. 
I'll make a motion to approve with the, with the amendments mentioned by our council. Okay. Uh, and look like second. Bob has seconded. Okay. Uh, Mr. Denise, Mr. Chair, would that include the uh, second set of minutes from the 22nd meeting? So the 22nd meetings, we are approving the minutes of December 8th. Yeah, it's item D. Board meeting. Yeah. And item D, we're approving the minutes from December 22nd. Thank you. All right, uh, Denise, roll call, please. Director Muller. Aye. Director Coverdale. Aye. Director Michelson. Aye. Vice President Feldman. Yes. President Reynolds. Yes. All right. Do we have any uh, meetings attended or director's comments? Go ahead, Ken. Uh, you're on mute. There you I, I, I did some uh, snow research in the High Sierra. I spent uh, numerous days carefully and cautiously uh, from the elevation of 8,000 to 10,000 feet. And I can tell you that if there's anybody confused about the condition of the state of California snowpack, it's, it's marginal at best. And I don't think it's, you know, scheduled to be much improved through the rest of this month. And so I think that we need to be really cautious and make sure that we begin to communicate with our customers that we're going to maybe have to be very careful. Um, you know, it's, it's not a pleasant report, but it's very accurate. And, uh, and I don't think it's only in our area of the Sierra, the central Sierra. I think it's all the way through. So it's not, Anything that we need to react to yet, because you can see the water, the storage in the uh, SFPC system. But I can tell you that it is really thin up there at very high elevations. And it's uh, that sort of uh, the backup storage. And um, Kathleen, I'm not trying to swoop in on your deal, but but uh, it's scary. And, uh, and we left for that reason. That's how thin it is. So anyway, that's all I've got to report. Yeah, I, I can report the same from Utah. It's thin here too. I've, I've been reading about the polar vortex splitting and that doesn't mm -hmm. look good. All right, um, then let's, uh, let's move on to the general business. And our first order is the water district's basic financial statements and independent auditors report. Yeah. Well, just about to take a minute, I, I would like to introduce um, Jeff Palmer, who is our auditor um, from FEDAC and Brown, um, who's joining us tonight. He has been with us for the, for the last uh, few years. So um, welcome, Jeff, and Thank you. turn it over to you. Thank you. Can, uh, can everybody see the uh, PowerPoint presentation that's up? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, um, again, my name is Jeff Palmer with FEDAC and Brown here to present the 2020 audit results. Okay, to start here, uh, just like to say that our audit was performed in accordance with auditing standards generally accepted in the United States of America. To, base, to generally kind of describe what we do, we typically come out for uh, two times for our field work. This year was um, an exception due to COVID. And uh, fortunately, everything ran smoothly, uh, but we, we perform our interim field work where we interview staff and management uh, to gain an understanding of the existing controls. We test those controls to determine that they're operating effectively. We then typically come back to our office and we plan our audit at that point, and then we'll come out at our final field work and we'll agree balances to supporting documentation and perform sub substantive test work on those year-end balances. And then we perform uh, analysis of key relationships between the balance sheet and income statement. We issue several reports as part of our audit. And the first report that we issue is our independent auditor's report, which you'll see that we issued an unmodified clean opinion. This is the highest form of assurance we can provide as the auditor. 
and it reads, in our opinion, the financial statements referred to above present fairly in all material respects, the financial position of the Coastside County Water District as of June 30, 2020. The second report that we that we issue is our management report. And in this managed report, I'm pleased to announce that we did not identify any material weaknesses within the district's internal control structure. The third report that we issue is our communication to the governing board. In this report, we identify what our responsibility is as the auditor under US generally accepted auditing standards. We identify the scope of the audit management's responsibility for accounting practices and policies, the accounting estimates, which are most sensitive, which include uh, cash and investments, capital assets, other post-employment benefits, and the pension plan. Uh, corrected and or uncorrected misstatements are also attached at the end of this management report. And we're pleased to communicate that we had no difficulties encountered in performing our audit and no disagreements with management. Okay, coming to the financial highlights section here, uh, you'll see down in the bottom right corner that the net position increased by 3.3 million approximately from 43 million to 46 million at the end of 2020. And also you can see as part of the uh, net position, the makeup of net position, uh, we have a total remaining net position, unrestricted net position of 4.4 million, which is available for future use. Moving to the next slide here, we have total revenues increased by 1.1 million to 14.7 million. Operating revenues increased by 1 million due primarily to increases in water consumption sales. Uh, Non-operating revenues increased by approximately 100,000, primarily due to increases of 68,000 in property tax revenue related to assessed valuations, 25,000 in investment earnings, and 13,000 in other revenue. Total expenses increased 205,000 to 11.5 million, of which operating expense expenses increased by 148,000, primarily due to increases of 217,000 in general administrative expense, 135,000 in pumping expense, 98,000 in transmission distribution, which were offset by a decrease of 303,000 in source of supply as compared to the prior year. Non-operating expenses decreased by 28,000, primarily due to decreases of 34,000 in amortization of debt issuance costs, 22,000 in interest expense, and those were offset by an increase of 25,000 in loss on disposal of assets compared to the prior year. At this point, um, I'd like to see if there was any questions, but before I do, I'd just like to thank management and the board for their cooperation extended to us throughout our audit. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any questions? And Mr. Chair, it's John. I have just a very brief uh, a question on page 10 <clears throat> when we're talking about cash on hand. Uh, it was $800. That's a small amount. Uh, what What is the practice of the office on the cash on hand? Is it managed by the manager only or other staff members? Uh, I can I can answer that. Basically, we have um, that's that's cash that we kept for dealing with customers primarily. So it's at our our, our front desk. Um, however, you know, with COVID, our doors are closed, but it's used for that and also um, uh, petty cash. That, that amount is pretty standard. It's what I see anywhere from eight hundred to fifteen hundred dollars is usually what cash on hand typically uh, is with most governmental agencies. Thank you, Jeff. I have a question, Mr. President. <clears throat> yeah, go for it, Ken. When when I got to one of the back parts of the report. Um, there were these about nine or 11 things that were like JE1, JE2, which I'm assuming are journal entry 
correction or modifications or I just don't understand what that is. I mean, are those places where you found numerical differences and so you adjusted them? Uh, you know, I just, if you, I don't mean to be so naive, but I've only been looking at these for about 40 years, but I, I don't, don't really know what that means or what, what that's all about. If you could explain that. And then I have a follow-up question, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Okay, I, I can answer um, the journal entries primarily that we have here, and this is uh, pretty typical with, I would say about 98% of my engagements, uh, whereas the auditor has been, you know, has been preparing the journal entries related to GASB 68, the pension liability, and GASB 75. Um, in our industry, you know, I've seen, you know, the idea was, is, was that, Eventually, these were entries that we were going to pass off to our clients. Um, in the first four to five years of us booking this entry, uh, CalPERS had changed the methodology uh, about three or four different times. Um, and so we, we've continued to book these entries, and it looks like a lot. But really, the reason why there are, uh, you know, five entries for, uh, or, or four entries for GASB 68 and then there are two, three, four entries for GASB 75. Um, the reason is, is that uh, we could book that simply as one entry, but there would be no meaning to that entry. And I, I booked this entry following the uh, implementation guide white paper that was uh, produced by the uh, Council of Municipal Governments uh, back in 2015. Um, so that in, in the case that the district were to go back and have to unwind uh, the different steps and processes of GASB 68, uh, they would be able to do that because every entry has its own specific meaning. So really, it's, it looks like a lot, but it's, it's there to, is, is more for definitional purpose and to, to give explanation. Uh, I usually provide between two to three different schedules to management so that they can follow how the numbers go. And, you know, this basically falls in line with a roll forward schedule that I provide the district so that, you know, each step of this kind of matches up and it's, it's explainable. It's, it's more understandable, essentially. So these are kind of stepping stones to the end result. And, and I guess, <clears throat> in 25 years, I've always really hoped that a person like you in your position could uh, come out with a stronger comment than we, we don't find any problems. And so uh, I've always wanted to hear from an auditor. Uh, it seems to me like the district does an amazing job of accounting business of the district. But it seems like auditors are never allowed to say, good job. And so I, I just wonder, like off the record, when you look at this, this is a really good job, isn't it, by the district? Absolutely, I can definitely attest to the fact that uh, I think I've told Mary several times that she is, you know, my my favorite client or client of the year <laughs> because <laughs> the the support that she provides is, you know, I, I usually don't have to ask for a lot of things uh, because it's usually right there already in front of me. So um, yeah, I, I definitely you know take my hat off to Mary and the work that she's done to prepare the audit for us uh, makes the audit a, a, a smooth transaction. And as far as the uh, district district is concerned, you know for the most part, other than these GASB entries, uh, really not a lot of a lot of issues. And I I audit pretty deeply. I ch I change my materiality scope down to what I need to do in order to gain some coverage at least on every area so um you know again yes the the district did an outstanding job this year thank you yeah we're very we're very proud of mary uh, thank you for your time absolutely thank you for doing the report and it, it looks like a good a good project well done thank you when, um, do i we, have a question do, go ahead bob um it's only a question, probably lack of understanding the process. 
If in fact, this is the report from, uh, as, the, as of the year ending June 30th, and something was seriously wrong with our financials, we wouldn't know about it for about six months because it's now January of 2021. Is that the standard window for delivering <clears throat> the prior year? I'm, I'm just asking for information because it's about six months after the fact, almost 18, if you look at the beginning of the year, <clears throat> is that the norm for people to get them that, in that time window? Probably always did, I just don't remember. And so that's why. <laughs> It just seems like a long year for some reason. It's, sorry about that. Well, de definitely, um, it, it, it definitely has to do with the timing of the engagement, when we start the engagement, when we finish the engagement. Throughout the audit, we are always communicating with management. So if there are significant issues, especially issues that are going to show up in the management report that are going to be communicated to the board, uh, you know, Mary is the first one to know. So. Um, that information, uh, you know, is, you know, basically brought out to the light as soon as we come across it. Um, but as far as the presentation, typically anywhere from uh, November, December, and then I have a few in, I have, I think I've got probably about five or six in January, and I've got a couple in February. So, um, so yeah, it's, it, again, it all depends on the timing. If, if the district uh, prefers or wants to have its uh, presentation earlier. Um, and I know I've been talking to Mary about doing this uh, presentation in December for next year. Um, you know, that's always available. We're, we're flexible to do that. I just Absolutely. was wondering, I mean, this was a tough year generally, <laughs> you know, getting things done. So I, I'm just asking Mary, you know, is that the way we should do it? Or if we got it a couple of months earlier, would that be a problem? I'm just, wondering because it seems a little uh, lengthy to get to here. Yeah, um, um, the key thing for us, we do have uh, obligations with our loans to report um, by the end of January. So it absolutely has to be done before, you know, in, by January, but okay. certainly it could be, you know, with working with Jeff and his team, we could figure things out. Um, to be earlier if, but uh, um, anyway. Like. Okay, thank you, that's your call. If I may, I have some comments. Just Mr. Mayor, uh, I will go ahead. Uh, and this is uh, first thing, uh, compliment uh, the board uh, for doing such a great job and staff of uh, 2020 and uh, 2019, 2020. So great job. Um, I'm just wondering with the professionals and the legal counsel on uh, page 23 under capital assets, the major asset investment is just a great uh, paragraph at the bottom of the page. Uh, would we be allowed to share that in a bulletin at some point to show the investments this uh, district is making for our community? Um, and it looks like uh, a lot of money has been spent in a positive direction there. So that's one thing, uh, and if I may just finish up with this. I know uh, in April 2nd, 2020, the governor signed that legislation of uh, SB 998, and I'm concerned about that because if we do happen to have a major loss, will the state be stepping up to cover those? I understand if individuals have financial difficulties as uh, Board member Coverdell mentioned last meeting or two meetings ago uh, under hardships, but this is this is a very serious thing. If you have a major company uh, delinquent and not pay up, the state are you going to come and back us up with the expenses we just spent for infrastructure on the district? So those are just my comments at this time. All right. Um... Let's, uh, I think we need a motion to uh, accept this uh, report. Yes, we're about to mention the I move to accept the financial statement. All right, and do we have a second? A second. I'll second that. <clears throat> Press I'll go second. Ahead and second it. 
Yeah. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> yep. Thank you, Ken. All right. So, uh, Denise, let's do a roll call, please. Director Muller. Aye. Director Carverdale. Yes, and, and I love the auditor's report about what a fine job we've we've done in the district. Thank you. And thank you to the staff, please. Yep. Thank you. Director Michelson. Yes. Vice President Feldman. Yes. President Reynolds. Yes. All right. Next we have our, uh, so Jeff, thank you very much for that report. Much appreciated. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, Mary, you want to do the uh, financial statements yes. and basic review? <laughs> Uh, yes, and um, I just want to say that I I am very grateful for a wonderful staff um, in, in who really helped prepare a lot of the materials for the audit. So I just want to say thank you. Um, but um, anyway, I can't believe we are halfway through the year um, as um, director. Uh, our Vice President Feldman told, uh, brought up. Uh, so, but we, um, so in looking at the last six months, we are um, ahead on our um, budget, which is great. Um, we're, uh, we, our water revenue is up 40, 429,000 over our budget. Now realize I had reduced our budget um, for understanding COVID and some issues with losing a major customer and various things. So we're, we're, you know, we're a little below last year, but we're above our budget, which is good. So we're on a, a good track. Uh, we also, um, our county taxes and ERAF receipts were higher than uh, what I had budgeted as well. Uh, in terms of our expenses, we were also uh, we're below on um, uh, 252,000. Uh, a big chunk of that is uh, we, personnel costs. We have two open positions we haven't filled yet, and part of it is just understanding how we deal with uh, positions with. Uh, COVID um, with having them in, in the office and uh, so it, and a position in the field. So it's, you know, it's getting training and various things. So I hope that we'll, we'll get those positions uh, filled soon. Uh, also, we, we saved on election expenses. Um, and again, we have timing issues, you know, of, of spending during the year. So, uh, so anyway, we, you know, we're doing, uh, um, good, and I hope that we're, um, we'll continue with this trend. Uh, so any expenses, any questions on the PL at this point? Oh. Uh, so in terms of uh, capital improvements, uh, we spent uh, 2.2 million for the first six months. Uh, we have a, you know, we have a plan um, with including last year's rollover items and current items of around uh, uh, 5.2 million for the year. Uh, I think we'll, we will fall below that spending. Uh, we have a couple projects that have gotten uh, delayed. Uh, one being the, uh, we have a project for uh, you know, replacing the pipe uh, for underneath the creek at Safeway. And we're still working on CEQA. So that will probably be delayed into early um, the next fiscal year. So, but we are pushing forward. Um, we're really excited. We're gonna go out to bid um, in the upcoming um, month, uh, actually early February to, um, to find a, 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 a party to construct all, all of our um, Nunes plant improvements. Uh, that uh, we're, we're just finished up the 100% design. Uh, right now, it looks about $7 million uh, for the project. That will span over two years, uh, but that's coming up. Uh, and we want to, um, we're anxious to meet with the new facilities committee to talk about some other projects. So um, that's coming up. 
Um, our cash balance is pretty identical to what it was last year. A little, it's a, a 9.2 million. Uh, the one area I did want to talk about briefly is our accounts receivable. Uh, we do, you know, they're they are creeping up. Um, we, uh, you know, and, you know, we're kind of, we're seeing it every month. We do have a um, an agricultural client who. We um, have uh, quite a large balance outstanding that we're concerned about. And so we actually have been meeting with them. We just had a meeting today to discuss their receivables balance. Um, we're, we're seeing some you know, residential customers uh, creeping up as well. Uh, you know, largely right now it's, you know, you, we see slow payers. Um, you know, there are a few, People not paying at all, um, but we're you know trying to keep an eye on it and um, do all we can. You know, at this point, and to Director Mueller's point, we you know it's basically with the executive order, we can't do a lot right now. Um, and uh, I don't see you know any compensation from the state on this at this of of uh, dealing with bad debts, but. Anyway, we're we're watching it. So, yeah, if I may just repeat a little bit, I completely respect and understand the residential issues, but a commercial operation, I think, is just uh, uncalled for, and that's the one I know you're going to staff's going to have to keep pushing hard to get some collection out of that because that's running up a big ticket. Otherwise, we could disconnect. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. I mean, right now, uh, you know, with the executive order, that included small businesses, um, and uh, so I, it, you know, we need uh, to do some more investigation on dealing with an issue of with a, a large balance. So I will be talking to Patrick soon about the, one of the issues. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> The fact that the um, new rate increase kicked in this month, January first, is not going to necessarily help that issue either, in terms of uh, falling further behind in some of these cases <laughs> going forward, because that's built into our income stream, and so uh, that could still, you know, that could make us uh, move the wrong way in, in a little bigger. With a little bigger impact on so, so, I mean, we did that, and stuff is starting to surface that shows it is a problem. Uh, the stimulus may help. There'll be another stimulus kick here for some people, but um, yeah, I'm glad we have good reserves and good cash flow, better than we planned. So that'll help to offset some of what we may not see here going forward. For one more question, Mr. Chair, if I may ask staff. On the Nunes sure. uh, expansion program, are we, I just need a little refresher after all these years, are we still on uh, uh, chlorine or are we looking at chloramine? We're still using liquid chlorine. Okay. And we, we generate it on site made out of salts. We're not on the chlorine. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, uh, James. Okay, good. Looking oh. forward to that visit someday soon. Thank you. Um, Mary, Mr. Yeah, President, ahead, can I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Ken. Yeah, uh, Mary, Mary when, when you look at uh, business accounting standards, it's pretty typical in, in a business to look at bad debts as a percentage of gross receipts. And if you were to characterize our, um, you know, bad debts or the, you know, the people that are getting a little in arrears, as a percentage of our business, aren't we well below sort of standard accounting standards of, of that type of a thing? Is that, I don't know if I'm phrasing it very well. Uh, uh, yes, uh, from perhaps, you know, the you know, uh, private sector business. Uh, I will say until really in the last year we were shutting off customers within you know, 
15 days of non-payment and now we're, we can't shut off anybody at all. And also uh, when we get back to normal, I'll say we, we can't shut off for 60 days. So it is, um, and so, you know, we are seeing higher for us. Uh, certainly our bad debt, which actually was on the um, uh, consent calendar, we, you know, most of our bad debt has been related to people who uh, leave, to, who, you know, close up their account and leave town. And so that's where we had, you know, 10, you know, 11,000 to, to write off. And usually that would be our only bad debt uh, because we're so, we, you know, we were just right being able to um, shut people off right away. But now we can't do that. So. It, but I was pretty it, surprised so what a small number it was in terms of our cash flow, you know, in terms of our income. I'm not saying it's okay, or we should ignore it, but, you know, given the complexity and the intensity of the experience that we have right now in America is pretty you know, unparalleled. I don't know of a parallel time when it's been quite so crazy and so many people on unemployment and, you know, people really suffering financially. Um, I was just surprised by the number. I wasn't, uh, you know, I didn't go, oh my gosh, with numbers like that, you know, we're going to run out of cash flow. I don't see that at all. So I guess I'd like to have you address that if you don't want to. No, I, I think, I, you know, I think right now, I think we're, we're fine. I mean, we're hovering around, you know, past two debt balances of 224,000. Um, that is, but that's, a lot of that's, um, you know, one month late. I mean, I frankly, I, I, I see us having more slow payers and um, actually people not paying their bills at all. I mean, we do have a few of those, but generally, I, I you know, I really see that um, our, you know, most of our customers are really trying to pay their bills, so. Yep. Okay. Well, anyone else? All right, thank you very much, Mary. Much appreciated. Uh, our next item is the uh, review of the district board committees. Um, everybody, does everybody have a copy uh, and had a chance to take a look at what the committees are and what the associations are? And I would open the floor. We have two things that need to happen. Um, Jim needs to be replaced. Um, and this is, of course, the annual time that we review who wants to do what. I My thought is that folks who have a, a leaning towards doing something, um, that they are going to do a better job at that. So I would be open to that. Um, I do think Chris has been our Bosca person for many years and has quite a rep, you know, a, a relationship with that group. Um, but I would understand Chris, if you no longer wanted to do that. No, you know, I've been there since the beginning and we're in really contentious litigation right now. Um, so I do enjoy working. I have a developed a personal relationship with, um, our chair, uh, our CEO, I'm sorry, uh, Nicole, she, Actually, I've, I've known her since our, our children went to school together. Um, so I have communicated with her a little bit off, offline in that things are getting a, a little little touch and go in our in our lawsuit. And I really, I can't say too much more. Uh, Patrick would probably stop me. Um, so I do enjoy the working relationship that I've developed with her. I'd like to see this through. I'm not sure any of us <laughs> will see this. <laughs> Uh, this lawsuit through. It is just being slow rolled and now it's almost at a standstill. So I, I would enjoy um, working on Bosco. Thank you. I think that that makes a lot of sense. Um, Bob, you've done a really good job with the uh, California special districts. Are you comfortable continuing in that role? Yes, fine. No problem. Okay. I get their right. messaging and stuff and keep my eye on it and let Mary know anything exciting or needs to be addressed. Okay. 
John, I was going to suggest that you might be a good match for the Association of California Water Agencies if you were amenable to that role. I'm comfortable with whatever you feel is best for this board, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, I, I will admit that I do have a little bit of uh, interest in, uh, in board member Michelson's position someday. Uh, if that ever comes up, or do we have an alternate for that uh, position, um, Chris, or no? Uh, you know, there never has been an alternate. Right. I'm fine. What, you know, I, think, I understand. I, John, I think the only one we we um, put made a, a a written alternate is the LAFCO group, where each of us as a director is the alternate by how we we pencil it out. Sure. Um, I think that if there was a case where Chris couldn't make a Bosca meeting and, and needed you to fill in, he could he could just ask you to do that without any further request. Isn't that Thank so you. I, I would accept that suggestion. And I would accept okay. LAFCO too if needed. Yeah, so the 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 two that are, are on the so why I, I was gonna suggest if you do you have a preference for the joint um, water agencies or the um, Association of California Water Agencies, John, for which one of those would, would have a higher interest for you? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, your direction is chair, whatever you feel is appropriate uh, that would benefit our district, I would be willing to serve on that area. Okay. I, I think you would enjoy the, the aqua group more Yes. Ken, do you, you don't have a, a, a spot on here for external organizations. Is there one that you'd like to, to be participating in? Um, yeah, I'd kind of like to be the uh, snow research guy. <laughs> is there a special <laughs> category for that? that uh, there you know there what? is. I actually wanted to meet Patrick Miati, Miyaki up there at, at a Heavenly, and we could kind of you know, bring tape measures and uh, double check. Uh, to tell you the truth, uh, one of the things I was going to suggest is I'm getting a little long in the tooth. And I've been on the financial uh, committee for a long time. And I think that's the reason why there's over $9 million yeah. in accounts, uh, contrary to a lot of people and their opinions. But so I think it might be really smart what I'm worried about with the district is I think we need to form a committee to look at how we transition out of our jobs and attract some youth into the board positions and build the future of the Coastside County Water District. And so I wonder if it isn't time to uh, let someone else or have someone else involved in the uh, financial committee and make sure that we've got uh, some good stewards going forward. You know, there's not really a young person among us. And I worry about that. You know, at some point we won't be here and someone's gonna have to be. And someone there is gonna have to understand how important it is to have enough money to maintain, you know, look, look to me like in the audit, $46 million of identifiable uh, realities in the district. And it's not going to go down in value. So, you know, I think you might want to consider that, who might take that spot. And- uh, All right. I, I think in, in an effort to move that forward, we sh I've talked to your children and they feel we should start a TikTok group and uh, you can be <laughs> yeah, a that would get representative. Them. Yep, yep. Um, John, do you want to do be on the finance committee? You know, uh, I, I think uh, my experiences would be a little bit better, maybe on facilities if needed, or if uh, former President uh, Dixon would be on the recycle committee with me, because <laughs> that, <laughs> that's punishing. <laughs> but uh, well. I, John, finance, we, I think we, is is not one of my strong points to be honest fair, with. You. Fair enough. All right. Um, what about John putting you on the recycled water committee? 
And fair warning, it looks like a non starter from all. Perspectives. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. And I think John already knows that. Um, we have also we have Jim's position with Human Resources Committee. Um, we don't really call that committee until we have a human resources issue. So um, I think we could strike uh, Jim uh, and put in really anyone um, in that. Any Anybody uh, have a strong feeling to be on that list? Wow, listen to the volunteers. <laughs> well, um, you know, I'm in town, I'm close. And, you know, if right. needed, I would be available. Uh, it Thank doesn't sound like it's it, a, Literally, it, it only happens when there's a HR issue that we bring that up. It doesn't happen on a regular basis. I've, I've had those um, issues with uh, city council, trust me. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. So if need be, but I don't think it's, a, you know, otherwise... Uh, if my wife comes in the office here and she's going to see my name down a few times, she's going to go, whatever. But yeah, no, yeah. wherever wherever we're needed, I think we, could, we would all step up. Um, I don't know if it's the value of putting it down as an external. As as all of you know, I'm very active in the, uh, the American Water Works Association um, and will probably continue to do so. Um, if it helps, we can put that officially recognizing that on the external organizations. Um, I do uh, actively represent COSIDE when I'm there, not in a name tag, but in what I attend and, and how I view it um, is to, to leverage that association to the benefit of COSIDE County Water District. So if it's a value to the rest of the board, and um, I would say we should add it to the external organizations list, if that's acceptable to the rest of the team. Any thoughts? I think well said. I think I would support your position. Anybody object? No. Okay, all right. Mary, I'll send, I've made some notes on here and I can send that out to you. Um, Mary, Mary, isn't ACWA and Joint Powers Authority the same thing, sort of? Are they two separate yes. organizations totally? Are they affiliated? So so I, Bob, I, I think the way it works is that... Because when you go to the ACWA meeting, you also go to the JPIA meeting. Yes, but I, I think the deal is they're, they're separate in corporations because the right. Joint Powers is the insurance, so they have a separate incorporation, but you are right. totally right. They, they operate hand in hand. So when you do one, you do the other. Would, right. would you... Would you want to rep represent us at both of those? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I usually attend the virtual meetings anyway now. I have Okay. Been. All right, Bob, I'll, I'll put you down for those two. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I think uh, that's a good match, Bob. Okay. All right. Um, then we have the LAFCO appointment. Um, this we've always done as the president with the group as the alternate. We do this each year, I believe, right? The right. technical question is, can it still on the finance committee or not? Or did he absent himself? I don't know what happened. Yeah, we didn't find a replacement for Ken. Okay, no, that's fine. Should that's good. Take, I'm, should I'm more than happy to participate. That's good. I'm, huh? I'm more than happy to participate. I'm proud of the work okay. that we've done. I'm fine with it. I just, I got to tell you, I think we need to shop, 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 shop around. For four okay, well, nobody's buying this. I mean, Mary's young enough. She'll still be happening, but, you know, we don't know. And uh, well, James is, got and, right now. James is a kid. And I think working on finance is fun. I'm, I'm yeah. really <laughs> the district's fine condition. All right. I'm, but I'm with Bob. Okay. Let me answer my question. So, President Reynolds, um, before yeah. you move on, the board actually needs to, you, you, you should review this chart as you've revised it, and the board needs to take action on this, because the board, uh, a couple of years ago, actually took action to approve the appointments to the committee when it reviewed, to the appointments to the committees when it reviewed the purposes of the committees like you're doing now, 
And so um, the board needs to take action to, to do the changes to, to these committees. So I think you need to go over this list, be sure that you've got um, appointments for all of them and then take action. Mary, I didn't okay. know if you had I saw you jump let in. Me, Sorry if I didn't let me that. read the, let me read what I got written down then. I have, uh, Ken and Bob for the finance committee. We have Bob and John for human resources. <coughs> Chris, are you okay staying on the facilities committee? Yeah, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. I, I've, I've found that has worked really well, the two of us. John, I think in the future, we'd be glad to rotate one of us through there. At the moment, I feel like with the Nunes treatment plant, uh, Chris and I have been, been halfway through that and it's working well. Um, the advisory committee, we have the, um, oh, that was one change I was going to make. All right. So then do we want to keep the Montero Water and Sanitary District uh, mutual interest committee going? And one of the questions I had was I feel like we need to move our strategic planning committee into a higher prominence role. Um, and I'm not, I feel like unless Bob and Chris feel strongly, I don't think we've made much progress with our mutual interest committee. Any thoughts? You know, with the lawsuit coming back on, mitigation uh, clearly didn't work. They're in, a, they're in a holding pattern and, and who knows when this will get in front of a judge. So no, nothing is happening there for a while. Okay. So um, why don't we disband that committee at the moment? Is that a, a reasonable yeah, thing I, to do? Uh, yeah, it would make perfect okay. sense to me. So, so we'll, we'll disband that committee. Um, I think that I would actually prefer and I'm, I, let's talk about how we could do this. And, and I, um, I, this rolls into another agenda item, but maybe we can cover it at the same time. Our recycled water committee and our strategic planning committee, um, one of the things that I'd like to see us work on is our long range uh, source evaluation. And that could be done um, as either an ad hoc committee or, yeah, sorry, as an, as an advisory committee would be the way I'd suggest we continue that um, recycled water or and or strategic planning committee. Right now, strategic planning is Ken and myself. Um, Ken, do you want to have John on that? Do you want to be stay on that? I, I, I would really like to finish up with you. If you're amenable, you're busy, you're okay. the president, you got a yep. lot going on, but I think you had a great start. You know, you okay. have a wonderful paper on it, and I think we're a couple steps into it, and we're going to have okay. the project planning, uh, hopefully, is coming up. And so maybe we'll All get right. marching orders and we can bring that, you know, to a closure. It would be great. Okay. Happy to work I, on I, that. I would say let's keep then for the strategic planning, let's keep Ken and Glenn on that. Um, recycled water, my, one of my thoughts was to tweak that and change the name from recycled to more what the community. In other words, what I was curious about was whether John and pick a partner, John, but if John was looking at where our community what the community's vision of what our long range water needs and, and use will be. And it struck me, John, that you would be really good at that. Um, and so um, it, it's the whole purpose of the recycled water committee was to look at, at water into the future. One of the questions I might ask you, John, was whether that would be a committee you could work on and um, take your pick as to who would be your partner in that on that committee. Yeah, I, I appreciate the uh, compliment there. I think uh, with the potential drought and the potential looking for new water resources local and with, uh, you know, the way the regulations in California are coming with a lot of businesses, you know, we might be reevaluating some of the big accounts out there. And we're yep. 
seeing that happening with this, uh, not the cannabis, but uh, the hemp situation is a disaster that these guys are all trying to grow. So, yeah, I think, you know, we're available to all get in there and share. We don't want to overdo any board member in particular, but we're all willing to give our share of time we can. Yes, but I think that's a good idea with, uh, because as we know, it's been 20 years since the uh, recycled water vote was taken in the city of Half Moon Bay. And let me see where we are. I would, <laughs> I would be more concerned about the sand plant collapsing before we get recycled water. Let's yeah, that's and, and good point. Absolutely an issue. Yep, I, I agree. So John, we'll put you on that. I, I'm thinking that since I'm on the strategic planning committee, I would not be on that. Ken or Bob or Chris, would, would any of you be a, um, a good match to join John on that? Chris, I'd, you're I'd, in. I'd actually with really like well. to work with John on it. Okay. That's great to work with John on it. Uh, it okay, was you're on. harder, John. You know, uh, okay. Glenn and I put four years into it, and uh, it okay. was complicated. But you're, you're kind of a deal so, maker. People have a lot of respect for you. I think that it, it might be worth it to give it another shot. Dave Dixon yep. had a lot of fun over there at those meetings and Mary yeah. did a lot too. So we've got a lot of good staff support. Uh, but the, the issue, of, as you know, is they want to put a tent on top of the expansion that has never been utilized. And that's where they wanted to do the, the water treatment for the uh, recycled water. So it's complicated. Okay, so what I've got then is is Ken and John will be on our uh, recycled or if, if you're okay with with uh, community, um, yeah, let's keep call. Do you want to call it recycled water? Or do you want to call it uh, community water future? Let's let's stay recycled because I think you're okay. you've got this on uh, future water sources. And I think okay. that the two should be separate. I mean, truthfully. Okay. But it's up to John. All right. So, all right. So what we've got is we're gonna uh, we'll then have recycled water, and that will be Ken and John, and strategic planning will be Ken and Glenn, and is there that would be our advisory committees. Is there anything any other committees that anybody feels we should uh, put on the table now? Thank you. Go ahead, Mary. Uh, staff, uh, we recommend that you might want to consider a, um, a short-term committee for the urban water management plan. Um, we are... Oh, yes. Yep. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I, as two people I would think of uh, would be Bob would be good there. Chris, do you have an interest in that or, or would that... I can, I know, has read them in the past. Um, Chris, where are you at? Oh, no, I, I, I would step up if no one else wants it. Okay, does anybody else, Bob and Ken, do you want to do that one? Hmm? Ken, do you, you don't want to do it, do you? Um, you know, I'm feeling... Which now? Here? I'm feeling really <laughs> burdened. <laughs> yeah, what is all this? right, let's, uh, let's put... Chris, Chris and Bob, would you be willing to be on the um, urban water uh, plan? Sure, I am. No, no problem. Urban water plan committee or yep. advisory yep. committee? It's urban. Yes, yep. fine. Huh? Yep. Okay. Sure. All right. So that's another. That looks good. Advisory committee. And then just to clarify for for. Um, hmm. John, if you don't mind, we'll do a slight reshuffle. So Association of California Water Agencies and the JPIA, we put Bob on. And then the special districts, we put John on. Chris will stay with Bosca. The board president will stay with Special Alaska. districts. The yes, CSDA, sir. you put John on yes, that side? CSDA. That's good, yeah. Yep. Okay. How to act what he can do with CSPs, man. Thank you. Okay. Everybody good with that? So I'd like to move that we approve the uh, committees as uh, amended tonight in our uh, meeting. 
And I don't know that we need to read every single one back into the record, but Patrick might address that. No, I think that uh, your president just walked through each of those and they're all been identified. And I think it's fine to move on what the board just went through. In that case, I'll second that. All right. Okay, we have first and a second. Denise? Director Muller? Aye. Director Coverdale? Yes. Director Michelson? Yes. Vice President Feldman? Yes. President Reynolds? Yes. All right. Going on to the next, we have a Coastside County Water Board member representative and alternates to participate in LAFCO. Didn't we just do this? But I think it, it goes as a separate motion, Pat. Is that true? Or can we? Uh, is there any discussion or can we just have, can I just make a motion to appoint uh, the board member uh, the president and then the board members as the alternates for LAFCO? Yeah, if there's no discussion, I think you could just make the motion and somebody second it. So okay. second. Any discussion? I'll, I'll make the motion. Uh, does anybody want to second it? Second. Okay, Denise, roll call, please. Director Muller? Aye. Director Coverdale? Yes. Director Michelson? Yes. Vice President Feldman? Yes. President Reynolds? Yes. Okay, Mary, can I, do you want to leave the next one or do you want me to do it? Um, well, I can start off. I, I did, um, I, we spoke about uh, a possibility of doing a, a future strategic planning workshop. It's been since 2017 since we had a workshop. And so, um, and there was the focus on um, the uh, workshop really um, zeroed in on long range water supply planning. Um, just, uh, I can show a quick, slide that um, if you can see it, you see my slide? Yep, yeah. I can see it. Ah, sorry, it moved. Um, this one. That's um, yeah, okay, so, Actually, I, I pulled out the report um, from 2017, and so you have, you know, basically you have you have a number of items that adopt a 10-year water use plan and vision, the uh, recycling, uh, coordinating the water supply with um, local coastal plans, and improving local source utilization. Uh, it really, you know, zero in on your a you know, long-term water supply planning. So I'll stop sharing there. Okay. Uh, my, my, my thought was that by next month, we might think about how the board would like to move forward on this plan. And uh, so the idea was to give the team a, a month to think about it. Uh, and have some suggestions that they could forward to Mary about ways we could move forward. And I think that it's there, there's not much doubt that we would want to seek professional assistance in some areas. There's not much doubt that the staff knows a tremendous amount of the local knowledge. And I think that there's no argument that our long range plan will need a great deal of community buy-in. It's my feeling that that if we are, the whole purpose of the board is to plan ahead and try and anticipate what uh, our needs will be fiscally, water-wise, and water rates for our community in the future. And we don't get that end goal if we don't plan on it now. Um, so that, that was the, in, a, in a summary, what I think. I think that the strategic plan that we did three years ago was valuable in that it showed the board was thinking strongly along those lines 
And so now comes the question uh, would be let's strat strategize, uh, come up with a strategy on how we as a team feel would be the best way to move forward. And the thought would be that we would do bring those ideas to the board next month. Any thoughts? Go ahead, Ken. Um, you know, one of the things that I've witnessed over the last however many years is I'm really resentful of those deals where we get some professional person in there and they get out their big notebooks and they get out their fancy pens and we write all this stuff down and we all go around and we rah, 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 this whole list of stuff. And then it just gets tabled and we never do anything with it. And it's all written in these lists. And I don't want to pay for that. You know, whether it's Brown Act compliant or, you know, that's Patrick's job to figure out. I'm going to go have a frank direct meeting among, among board members of what we think the future of CCWD is all about, supported by our staff with their concerns and their worries. And I don't want a facilitator. I think it's a waste of time. I think it's a waste of money. It's some deal that someone invented. To me, it, you know, it's reminiscent of, you know, don't really think about it. Let's just show up and have lunch and coffee and write this stuff on the board. And frankly, I, I'm frustrated by that. I think we need to be transparent. It needs to be an open meeting. General public has to be involved. And it's kind of cool, this idea of having a referee in the ring, but I, I don't think it's productive. And so I'd like to see us go beyond that format into something that's real that cares about the community, cares about the future, cares about water, cares about something from the people who've been involved in it for 20, 30 years that have a sense of all these things. So I'm not trying to be negative person here, but I'm offended by those things. I'm not interested in it. I don't think they're productive okay. and I don't think they're worth the money. Well, Ken, I, I think that, that your your points are, are well taken and I've made notes to it. And so I can uh, I can work on putting that together as an option that we we I'll try and flesh that out for next month and see if we can't put that as an option. We'll call it the Ken Coverdale uh, plan. Thank you. John. Right, man, Mr. Chair, it's been my experience with respect to Ken. Uh, I've always called them an oral massage. That's all it does. It gives us a massage for everyone saying their, their piece. But there's some good value coming out of professionalism by staff and others to ensure that it is documented properly and we don't just have an oral massage and put in the file somewhere for years later. Yep. Um, okay. Bob? Um, I guess I'm going to take a different tack on this. Uh, probably uh, play the devil's advocate. Um, I did research on the strategic meetings we've had in uh, CCWD that where you know I've been involved anyway. There have been two actually. One in 2008 <clears throat> with management partners who did the same kind of service for us. And one in 2017, the second one that I remember that I have notes on, maybe, does anybody remember others? Oh yeah. Those are the two I know of. <clears throat> so it's a period of about um, eight to 17, nine years between one, and then a, the second one in 17, and another one in 20, 21, let's say. <clears throat> I reviewed sort of some of the things we came out of those meetings with, having been part of the process of them doing the uh, facilitation. And frankly, I'm very positive and impressed at all the things that were touched on and presented and discussed and laid out that actually uh, have been done and achieved 
and the things that I can refer to looking back that actually became items of, of action and uh, delivery. So I have a different view of this. I like to have some external approach to this to be able to help to bring together various views which we get from them, from us and from our key staff anyway, because they present that as part of their findings. Most of the findings are what people told them who have had the experience we're talking about. And what we deliver out of that for the past four years is at least a roadmap, even though maybe, you know, it's in a summary form of what we, uh, we took upon ourselves to do because we thought about it, talked about it, and had that fresh in our minds when we left that meeting. So I would say I'm not unhappy with that process. I don't think it cost us a fortune there, did it? 20K was the price tag on that thing, something like that, 18, I remember. I'm not sure what your opinion is. I thought we got the views of many people in, in the right way. The other thing I have a concern about, if we wanna broaden this, we did get all the right views in from a variety of sources because they did all the groundwork together. We couldn't have done that ourselves. There's no way we would have been able to do those interviews and stuff. The other thing that bothered me is that given the nature of the environment right now, to have large scale, any kind of large scale community participation and other than a virtual way is gonna be very difficult for the foregoing future until things have settled down a bit. And even for us, so that whatever we do, no matter if it's a virtual thing or a, of that nature, any kind of large gathering is not gonna be something that we're gonna handle easily. So we have to consider that and whatever the timing is and the approach we take to making this happen. So those are my views. I would do it. I would be happy to talk to people virtually from a facilitating group, give them all the information. I'm sure everybody else would be able to do the same thing, consolidate that and then have a, a session virtually to carry it forward to do it sooner rather than later. But if it has to be in person, I think it's gonna be later. And I don't know how much later, but later. So those are my thoughts, having really tried to put this through. Now it took nine years to get to the second one. I'm not too concerned if it takes another three or four months to get to the next one, because I don't think that we've done anything wrong. And I don't think we're not considering all the things we need to do. I think we need to put it together in a rational way for going forward. I think it's been a good, a good flow, actually, and that's my opinion and my sense of what we've achieved to this point. I may not be seeing it the way you do, but that's what I think. Thank you. I, I think, Bob, I think your, your points are, are good. I do agree with you. COVID makes this much, much harder to get the public engagement. Um, but thank you for those comments. That was good. Chris, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I kind of see a, a hybrid hybrid here. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Bob, not a super urgency. I think we, we could let this develop. Uh, Ken, to your point, yes, yeah, some of the facilitators are just a little too slick and they have almost created, you know, this mini in industry. And I, and I certainly don't want that. Um, that said, someone kind of does need to take lead um, it doesn't need to be, like I said, the overly slick facilitator. Um, I'm not sure who I can picture right now, but, but someone should be taking lead. I think maybe the, uh, us five could maybe present that person, our three or four subject matters that we would like to see discussed. And they could, you know, maybe build some kind of a, a very loose agenda around those. Uh, and then I'm going to really go out on a limb and be really optimistic. Um, I would like to do this in public. Uh, I would like to do this in person. And <sighs> there, <laughs> we're all hoping that there is a vaccine. It is that we do know it is out there. It just needs to get administered in a more, more time, timely manner. You know, and I think spring, summer, it may very well be possible. And I just like, I really look forward to sitting down with each and every one of you and sitting down with, with the public. You know, this, I think we're all kind of zoomed out. You know, I mean, what am I looking at? You know, one and a half inch squares of everybody. I, I want to go back. I so want to go back to meeting in person. Taking the optimistic view, I, I think it's out, out there in the very near, near future. 
and that's yeah, my, I, sorry um my Chris, I think you're you're totally correct yeah and and I, I think those are really good thoughts and and I think you are correct that we do want to do this in the public because that's that's absolutely the right way to do it um and I think you're right that it, it will work better and it may be that one of our goals is that a year from now that's the discussion we have with the public and I think my thought is to follow pick up on what Bob and and Chris are saying that we we should prepare what we're going to say and the message that we're we're going the discussion we're going to have uh I don't think we want to bring it as an unstructured what do you want to do next it, it, it we want to control the the train track that it's going down but I think that that we'll want to have our our thoughts and plans ready so that we can say hey guys these are the different options that the community could utilize for future water and tell us how 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 you feel about them and that will take some time for us to get that ready um so that it isn't just a an open-ended um it, we, we want discrete goals from our public participation. All right, um, are, are folks okay with our coming back then in a month to, to have an agenda item on, on how we would put uh, on the plan options for how to proceed forward? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. all right. That was a discussion only, so we'll move on. Mary? Okay, so um, next item, uh, we have um, the Family's First Coronavirus Response Act uh, expired at the end of December. Uh, this was put in place in March uh, by the federal government and provided sick leave um, benefits and other benefits for our, for workers. And we were, uh, this was a mandated benefit. And basically the, the key point is that it provided 80 hours of, of COVID leave uh, to employees. Uh, so at the end of December, as I said, this expired. And we have, um, what I would like to do is request that the board approve extending that COVID leave um, through um, June. You know, right now, if you, um, if uh, an employee uh, has close contact uh, with someone who has COVID, uh, it's automatic that they have to, to uh, you know, quarantine for uh, 14 days. If they catch COVID, they're gonna be out at least for 10 days, if not more. So this would help and it'll make a, a employees feel comfortable that they could take the time off. I, I really don't want anybody in the workplace with COVID. So, mm -hmm. uh, so with that, uh, basically all this would do, it would be extending. And if somebody's already used their 80 hours of, of COVID leave, um, you know, they wouldn't be eligible for another round. It's, it's basically for the people who haven't used it. And if something happens, they know that they have that leave available. Mary, has anybody used their 80 hours yet? Uh, we have um, two or three people who have used some of their hours. So. Okay. Do, do we need to, I mean, I suppose the chance of somebody getting it a second time is low, but so hopefully. Well, I mean, the, the question is if they were exposed, so they could they could take it. So that's you know, you know right now we're you know I was you know asking for the extension, but it is it that is a, a, a situation um, where you know if you're exposed, you could be out two or three times. <laughs> Got it. Yep. And okay. I, I believe recently the state is moving in that direction, uh, general manager. I'm reading more and more where they're extending care for this virus. So I think we're on the right page to do that personally. I will say Alameda County has done it. We used um, their uh, 
staff report is a, is a model, I'll say, but um, also in, in terms of I'm hearing from uh, my fellow general managers and um, so, you know, in that they want, that, you know, they're planning on going the same route. Okay. Um, do we need a motion for this? Is there any more discussion? I so move uh, we uh, approve this agenda item. Okay. Do we have a second? I second. Okay. Denise, can you give us a roll call? President Reynolds. Uh, yes. Vice President Feldman. Yes. yes. Director Michelson. Yes. Director Carverdale. Yes. Director Muller. Yes, I'll have, I'll to, have adjust, to adjust, but I'm still an eye guy in history, but uh, an eye is a yes. <laughs> All right. The next item is uh, the general manager's report. Mary, that would be you. Yes. So I um, included two communications from uh, Nicole Sankula, Abaska. Uh, her, uh, she made a statement uh, to the S SFPUC on the uh, proposed Wallamy River Voluntary Agreement. And um, also she has uh, just uh, some, uh, another communication on her remarks. Uh, you know, basically, you know, she's hoping that SFPUC um, continues to study and support uh, the, proposed agreement. Um, I don't know, Chris, if you want to say anything on about this. Yeah, I, I mentioned that earlier. It was it was pretty strongly worded um, in that SFPUC is really backing off using sound science to uh, dictate the, the, the flows on the Tuolumne. And we've kind of lost the governor a little bit too. So these are so the voluntary agreement, we were very optimistic about it about a year ago, and now the governor's office is, is losing interest. I mean, it sounds like the environmental side is prevailing, and they've certainly prevailed in, at the San Francisco. So we've lost two really important allies that we we're really counting on uh, in order to reach a voluntary agreement ba based on sound science. Um, this unimpaired flows could really really cost cost us. Um, if we were to go into a drought scenario and unimpaired flows were senior to our take, it could dramatically reduce the water that we get from the Tuolumne. So we could be in big trouble. So, and I was, it was about time. And Art Jensen, uh, prior CEO had told us, you know, told me privately, is anyone else, uh, else listening? Um, SFPC, they are not our friends. And we found that out in a very, very big, big way. They are not our friends at Bosca. And there has been a split and this could be, this could be problematic down the road. So yeah, that was, thank you for bringing that to everyone's attention. Uh, the other point I had on my report, uh, we, uh, during this past month, we had to do a fire drill to put together uh, a, uh, COVID-19 uh, prevention uh, program. This was dictated by Cal OSHA. And so staff rallied around. We have a 24 page document uh, that we have for our staff and uh, in compliance with Cal OSHA, so. And uh, apparently uh, Cal OSHA has been visiting work sites in the Peninsula and Bay Area to um, inspect for COVID compliance. So. Thank you for doing that. Unfortunately, it's a it's a, a needed thing to do. So well done and thank you. If I may quickly uh, ask Mary, uh, do we have an avenue for the uh, vaccine for the uh, Kosai County Water District uh, for in injections at all with the state or the county? Well, I will say, unfortunately, water workers would, were put in 1C. The EPA had us as 1B, and for some reason, California moved 
us into one C. So we're, um, we're in the batch where uh, mostly with the general public or at least anybody over 50, uh, and that's, and, uh, and with, I think they, they called us out and the financial services industry and IT consultants. So ridiculous. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, well, look at Bank of America. It's closed, and we don't know how long it's going to be closed for on Main Street. Yeah. It's a serious situation going on with B of A. Mm. But I just wanted to ask that because we're still, even as veterans, uh, we're trying to get in with the VA for our uh, vaccination. And it's it's dealing with a 97-year-old former chair of the Coastside County Water Board mm -hmm. to get him down there, and we can't even get an appointment for him. It's ridiculous. Okay, thank you for that correction then. All right, thank you, Mary. Uh, James, you're on. Good evening, board members. It's been a productive December. Uh, a little short on rainfall, as you all know. Um, so some of the December highlights are the Pilarcitos wells are running at 265 gallons a minute. There's not a lot of water out there, but we're getting every drop we can. Um, we're running the Pillar Cedos Reservoir at about 250. Um, San Francisco staff is concerned about the levels in the Pillar Cedos Reservoir uh, in terms of siphons being able to uh, meet their in-stream flow requirements. <clears throat> so they uh, request to be turned off. So Saturday we turned off Pillar Cedos Lake, and we are currently on Crystal Springs, Deniston, and the Pillar Cedos Wells. Um, Darren and I have been out to Pillar Cedars Reservoir. It is quite low. Um, Deniston is running at 400 for now. Um, until we get some rain, uh, we'll see how long we can do that for. Drop down to 300 if need be. Um, replace some hydrants, six uh, hydrants listed here. Um, so as I mentioned, December sources, we only had Crystal Springs on for Skylon in December. Um, but we are back on that now at uh, about 100 gallons a minute. Project update, uh, both the Deniston generators and automatic transfer switches are installed and operational. Uh, there was a parts uh, snafu with Cummins. They sent us the wrong cabinets. Uh, they weren't NEMA 4X rated to be outside. They are going to swap them out at their cost. So Darren's done a great job in following up on that uh, little mishap. They're gonna be resolving that, but if we do lose power at Deniston, we can turn these generators on and produce water. So I'm happy to say that. I'll give you updates once we get Cummins out to change out those cabinets. Uh, one of the big highlights is the emergency pump for the Pillar Cedos Reservoir has arrived. Mary's gonna show some pictures of it here. Um, it's trailer mounted. Uh, any of our pickups can uh, haul this. It will produce, uh, we, can, we can drop basically a snorkel into the Pillar Cedos Reservoir and pump over the spillway with some of the parts there. There's the, uh, the suction hoses there. You see the floats on the crate and the screens and the fittings. Uh, we have authorization to do this in an emergency. And this pump will do anywhere from 250 gallons a minute to 2,800 gallons a minute. Wow. So in a dire emergency, this pump is really going to help us out. Um, it's been factory tested. Darren had it taken over to the Coastside Fire Station, and we did some commissioning there. We do have some uh, remote monitoring components that weren't satisfactory. Um, Perk Rentals is working on that. Um, but we're real happy to have this as part of our resiliency and pre preparedness for uh, big emergencies. And as you can see, uh, it's much smaller than a megawatt generator that it would take to get Crystal Springs started. Uh, the logistics of evaluating having emergency power at the Crystal Springs pump station uh, just didn't pencil out. This pump with all the parts, uh, pumps, excuse me, the, the hoses and the screens and the floats was about 80000 It's a great investment, and uh, all the operations staff want to thank the board and Mary for being supportive of going forward with this. Uh, we're all going to sleep a little better at night knowing that we can put some water uh, into the creek if need be. Thanks for sharing the pictures. Do you guys have any questions about the pump? Yeah, you know, I, I do. So all of this beautiful like, expensive equipment, are we running out of storage space? I mean, uh, I see something like that and it probably should be stored at least covered, if not indoors. How are we doing on, on 
storing this? Yeah, as, as you guys know, the yard is very tight. So we have a container out in the Pillar Cedars Canyon with some emergency parts in it. And staff has customized shelving in there for those emergency parts. And we'll be able to put the pump inside the container. It's a Connex box. So it's locked, secured. And then we're even gonna have a little rack for all the piping, uh, the hoses and the fittings. Oh, good, good. So it's out of the elements and, and, and further away from the salt air. Okay, that's good to hear. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Good point. Uh, just a quick uh, comment. Uh, I think it would be beneficial for us to notify Cal Fire in a drastic emergency or earthquake situation that we would be able to supply emergency water and then notify San Francisco. That would be part of the benefit of us having that pump, which you've already went through with them. But I still think uh, Cal Fire should be notified for filling tankers or thing in a drastic situation. Certainly, that's a great suggestion. We'll make sure they know. John Riddell helped us coordinate using their draft system over at the Coastside Fire Station. So he's aware, but I'll make sure that he can share the news with his colleagues. Yeah, John, I think that's a good way to combine it all uh, to show that we're not just sucking water. We're there for an emergency situation. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. great OES asset. Yeah, makes sense. Thanks. Thanks actually, guys, the, the way that works is there's an agency called WARN, which is the Water uh, Agency Response Network. And we're a signature with WARN, and that, that's a already established protocol so that this stuff can work that way. So that it, it's uh, formalized and already in play. Good job, thanks, Chair. Uh, and then uh, moving forward, HDR, uh, we got the 100% design documents yesterday. We're gonna do a quick final review. Um, they're gonna finalize and we should be going to bid in late January, early February, and hopefully be able to award in March or April. Put down February, that's a little unrealistic. Um, so that project's moving along wonderfully. HDR has done a great job. Staff's been very engaged in providing lots of feedback and guidance. Uh, there's a, quite, a, quite a few parts to that project. Um, if, if, if I may ask, James, sure. if you're interrupting. Um, do we have cell tower issues up there? Again, I need refresher courses on that hill. Uh, is there are cell, cell tower uh, situations in that uh, vicinity of the treatment plant? Yes, there are a couple of cell towers up at the Nunes plant. And will they be relocated or will still be part of the? That's an excellent question. I had a project in Marina where we had to deal with Verizon and it threw us off by a year because they were so hard to deal with. We're avoiding all the cell tower infrastructure in that project. And as well as when we go into replace uh, Half Moon Bay Tank 3, we're gonna make sure that we steer clear of their infrastructure and not have to relocate or wait for them. Thank you. Excellent, you're welcome. Uh, and then as Mary mentioned, we have the 90% design on Pillar Cedos, uh, waiting for the biological resources evaluation from our biological consultant. And then we can start the CDP process. And then other good news is our 550 chassis, Ford chassis finally uh, is going to arrive to the Selzy shop later in February, and they'll be putting the valve exercising equipment together on that truck, and we should have that in the spring. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. James, thank you, much appreciated. You're welcome. All right, Kathleen, we're, uh, we'd like to talk about the urban water management plan now that we've tasked, uh, uh, allocated uh, five board members to uh, help. Mm. Hi. Huh? <laughs> um, yes, so uh, the district officially kicked off the preparation of its urban water management plan for 2020 by sending um, required noticing to the city of Half Moon Bay and the county of San Mateo. Uh, I did this at the end of December. So uh, the district also provided this uh, noticing to the district's water wholesaler, SFPUC, to Bosca staff, uh, to fellow Bosca agencies uh, members. Um, and also as a courtesy, uh, it was sent to other interested parties. Um, so in total, we notified about 43 entities. Uh, and um, the, the, official, the list is in the staff report if you want to see the, the actual list. Um, the notice was sent as an email um, normally we mail it out, but with the COVID, I um, thought that 
a significant number of agency staff were probably working remotely and wouldn't be in the office also due to uh, I, the end of December when I sent it, it was the holiday season. So uh, we sent this initial notice as, as an email. Um, there will be additional, additional noticing uh, to the general public and interested parties and the city and county as the process continues then um, we get an actual date of uh, the public hearing. Um, so about it, if you have any questions. That sounds good, thank you. What is, <clears throat> Kevin, what's the deliverable date on that phone? We have to submit to the Department of Water Resources no later than July 1st. So six months, less than six. Yeah. Five plus change, right? Right. Are we planning to get the help of the people that helped us in the prior? Uh, yes. Urban so land development? We, um, we are using West Yost again to help us yeah. put together that. So they're going to do the heavy lifting in terms of the uh, preparation, the data stuff, the stuff they did last night. So the yes. July 1st date is a viable date given the pandemic and the you know how uh, things are working. I'm just trying to understand. It's not it's not quite as smooth and seamless as it always was. <laughs> so is that going to be a good date? Um, it's challenging because the state is very delayed in um, providing the guidance for all the required elements, and uh -huh. and they are picky about. We have to submit a lot of it electronically. Right. in tables and and they haven't provide us, provided those final tables yet. So the latest, I was on a webinar today, the latest is their goal is to have it out in February. So yeah, well. it's a very tight, uh, it, you know, it, it, it's a very tight thing. Like you can't get too far ahead preparing it because, you know, things may change. But um, okay. The, the other issue we're waiting for is San Francisco is required to provide a standard wording um, that, uh, and um, in some drought scenarios that we need to put in the water shortage contingency plan. And uh, so I'm also waiting on that. And they're probably, SFPUC is probably waiting on DWR to finalize the <laughs> guidance. So uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a very tight schedule once we get So there. on that basis, is there any potential or possibility that the state <laughs> will relent on the date and actually provide a delay if necessary because of all of these other things that are happening? Like let me, let me some, it, some window of uh, flexibility. I'm just asking because given all of what you're telling me, it's going to be really demanding. So it, it would take an act of uh, legislation to change the date. Okay, well, I'm just asking because yeah. I'm just there's no, there's, there's no penalty for turning it in late. Okay. Um, uh, but, you know, we try to avoid that because... No, I understand. You know, yeah. But... Uh, okay. Yeah. And all the public oversight and public media and all the public uh, discussions on this that you have to do in advance... 60 days in advance, etc. That means that has to be done by uh, May. Yeah, right? I mean, if we, if we, we, yeah. So in theory, it's 60 days. If we, we aim toward um, getting the board approval and finalizing it by the uh, June board meeting, you know, we have to do it, it provide it 60 days in advance of that a draft um, for public. Okay, I'm just trying to point out to folks that. This is not a walk in the park, given the timing now, the delay in data, and we need to have it in advance for some of these things. So, whichever you need to get this done, is what I'm trying to say, like getting the help of West Coast and getting whatever resource you need to apply, being a member of this newly formed committee, I'm saying I think that's what you gotta do, and you have my support in doing that, I'm sure John's as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Kathleen, one of the discussions that came up with the director of the Water Resources Control Board in the spring in COVID mitigation and the COVID response plan was the district engineers were directed to allow 
delays or rescheduling of, of um, deadlines and tasks that were deemed a non-direct threat to public health and safety. And so that's certainly a venue that, that would be available. Um, DW, uh, DWR has made it very clear that uh, they're gonna hold to the schedule that, you know. It, it, okay. Yes, yeah. they, they wanted to die. The, the uh, other message was that nobody will die if it's if it's 60 days late either. True, that's what they say. But um, yeah. we yeah. try to keep to the deadline so we don't get backed up. But, um, well, but like I say, there is no penalty per se right. for being late. So we'll, it, the longer they put off the guidance, the harder it's going to be for us to meet that deadline. Yeah. No, th this, keep this us posted on it. This you got to keep us up to speed on that thing. Mm -hmm. We are on that, so we can move It was over. a really hotly contested item, and and that there was a lot of pushback from upper management. And the the then general base, the the foundation was they would not officially say anything could be late, but the direction from the top was there that there needed to be accommodation for delays and that 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 was sort of a two uh they were going to say two messages you got to do it um but we'll understand if you're late yes that's Thanks for the thank you yes all right are there any thank you kathleen are there any directors who would like to add an agenda item for i just uh, i just wanted to uh compliment dave dixon I've never seen him smile so much. I've been involved in a lot of meetings with that guy, but he's been smiling the whole time. And a lot of peace. A lot I just wanted to say that in, that's what I in the it. middle of the COVID-19 challenge, thanks for bringing that positive energy. Hey, you look happy, that's for sure. Hopefully, he's her happy to retire. My <laughs> alternate, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> look at that retirement smile, I'll tell you. Uh, I, I'd like to ask that next month, uh, Mary, uh, put on the agenda an item to review how we'll handle um, lack of payment uh, for uh, folks who don't have the money due to COVID to pay their bills and how we'll work with that uh, from a uh, point of view. And maybe we can have more discussion on that next month. So I'd like to request that as a, an agenda item. Anybody else? You know, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, just uh, tagging on to your great comment there. Uh, if legal staff could look into uh, us regarding gifting of public property. So I think we got to be careful how we word that. Uh, Patrick, what do you think? Um, I think it's appropriate for me to work with Mary. It sounds like she's got some things going on um, with regard to non-payment. Um, and working with Mary in, in connection with that. I think that we do have to be aware of gift of public funds, but we'll look at, we'll look at the non-payment issue in, in its broadest sense. And, and also in, in compliance with the governor's order, order as well, executive order. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Ken, you had something to say? You're on mute. Oh, you're waving goodbye. <laughs> All right, sounds like we're gonna adjourn the meeting. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, thanks, thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Scott, for the <laughs> <laughs>